in our last segment, we discussed the theory behind geothermal technology. Now let's continue with Brian Erlob from GeoComfort, who explains more about geothermal looping options. So is this the geothermal loop pipe that forms the fields? Yeah, absolutely it is. This is a high density polyethylene pipe, which is a plastic pipe. And the great thing about plastic pipe in the ground is it doesn't deteriorate. It's going to last for a long time. There's actually a 50 year warranty on this pipe. So good peace of mind for the homeowner. Once they install a geothermal loop field, they don't have to worry about it ever failing. That's right. And the other great thing about it is it has the ability to be fusion welded. What that means is we take all these other loops here that we've got and we actually tee that into the two pipes that go into the house. Almost like a manifold? Yeah, exactly, that's just like a manifold. And we fusion weld those pipes to this pipe, which means it all becomes one piece, and there are no mechanical fittings then that can have a potential leak possibility down the road. So really uh, an excellent, reliable system. So when the system is done and there's a manifold in place, it looks like there's mechanical joints, but since you melted the piping, fused it together, it all became one continuous loop. That's exactly right. Okay, and along the lines of the loops, you mentioned that there are some different options for the homeowner depending on the setting. Yeah, there are really, and this, as you can see, is a rural setting, and they opted to go with a horizontal loop. And this particular horizontal loop is what we call a slinky. And you can see here the coils of pipe are slinky together. And there's another horizontal loop that's called a racetrack where the pipes are actually laid in a straight line. The horizontal loops are really the most cost effective, but you've got to have the right soil in the land to be able to do that. Okay, you get into the suburban areas, of course, you don't have the property. We can drill vertical loops where we take a traditional drill rig and we'll drill vertically straight into the earth about anywhere from 100 to 300 feet, depending on soil conditions, uh, water table, and so forth. Well, with all these different looping options, ultimately, it seems to me, it would come down to the design. That must be very important. Who handles that? Absolutely, that's really the most important part of the process is the design and the independent contractors would be doing the design and they should be taking into account the heating and cooling needs of the home. And then they're also going to look at the soil conditions and use a software program to determine, depending on the style of loop that they're going to install, how much pipe to put in the ground and how much ground to cover. Boy, it seems to me if I'm a homeowner considering geothermal, I want to make sure I take advantage of an experienced contractor and ask the good questions. How experienced are you? How many have you installed? Who's gonna design my system? Yeah, that is really a great question to ask and really the most important part. You mentioned soil conditions. Does it matter if it's sand, if it's water, is it clay, black dirt? Yeah, absolutely. There's three real main components to loop field performance. The first one is moisture. We really like moisture in the ground because that helps transfer the energy better. The density of the soil, the more dense, the better. So rock is really good. Heavy clays are great. And of course, then the depth of the loop is also important because we've got to get below the frost. We've got to get to that stable temperature where we can capture that energy and bring that into the home. Again, it seems like it all comes back to the design and the experience of the designer to making sure that you have a worry-free system installed in your backyard. Absolutely. Okay, what happens if I have a real tight city lot? Can I still take advantage of geothermal technology? Yeah, that's a great point. Vertical loops can really be installed anywhere uh, because they take up such a limited space. So whether it's through your driveway and your front yard and your backyard, as long as you've got room to get the rig into your site, we can put in a vertical loop system and you could take advantage of a geothermal system. Yeah, and so in a city, in a country, uh, retrofit application or new construction, it's great technology. Does that pretty much uh, take care of the different looping options? Well, actually, there's a couple more that we haven't touched on. And one is what we call a pond loop. And if you were in a rural setting and had a pond that was relatively close to your home and large enough, we actually can sink the coils at the bottom of the pond and utilize that as our heat source. Because even in the middle of winter, Stu, that pond is still about 35 to 39 degrees, which has plenty of energy to heat your home very efficiently. That's amazing. And then the last one would be a relatively new trend, which is called directional boring. And what we're doing is drilling horizontally at about 15 to 20 feet underground. So we're getting into that stable earth temperature. But the nice thing about that technology is we're not tearing up as much of the yard and we can get into a much smaller lot. We can go underneath things. We can also bore into the home without having to tear up all the landscaping. And if they had a pool or a deck or something, we can get underneath that into the mechanical room with that technology. So our industry is definitely advancing and those are some of the great ways to get geothermal installed. Stay tuned, we'll see the inside components next when we continue with today's Home Remodeler.